Hey, Happy New Year! It's Doug Liu here with Better Life Research Tips. Today, I want to talk about the three methods that can be used to develop a coherent paragraph. Paragraphs are used to break up our writing into easy-to-read sections. Good paragraphing is a way to organize our ideas, and is also a way to help our readers to better understand our ideas. Since the paragraph is a collection of sentences, a basic requirement for a good paragraph is that these sentences need to be cohesive and coherent. Cohesive and coherent are two words that have similar but slightly different meaning. Basically, to be cohesive means the ideas or sentences are linked to each other and tied together. While to be coherent means these linked ideas are presented in a logical way and they flow smoothly. A cohesive paragraph are not always coherent, but a coherent paragraph must first be cohesive. So to be cohesive is just a good thing, while to be coherent is our ultimate goal. Generally, there are three methods we can use to develop a coherent paragraph. They are structure, transition words, and equal words. First, a coherent paragraph must have a clear structure. It is important that each paragraph only have one main point clearly stated in the topic sentence. All other sentences in the paragraph must relate to this topic sentence. In the previous video, I have recommended that in order to maximize the clarity of our writing, it is always a good practice to put the topic sentence at the beginning of the paragraph. The red line here represents the topic sentence. After the topic sentence, the black line here represents the supporting sentences that serve the topic sentence. The function of the supporting sentences can be summarized as 4E. They are explanations, examples, evidences, or evaluations that serve the topic sentence. A well-structured paragraph should contain the topic sentence and the supporting sentences in an orderly manner. The supporting sentences should be placed in appropriate order so that they can flow smoothly. The order maybe depends on their importance, time sequence, or the logical flow. Also, in the supporting sentences, when comparing or listing different ideas, we should use parallel structure. Sometimes, we may want to add a concluding sentence at the end of the paragraph. Both the topic sentence and the concluding sentence can help the reader to keep the main points of the paragraph in mind. Some writer may also want to put an introduction or transition sentence before the topic sentence. But again, a good practice is to always consider to put the topic sentence at first, unless we have a very good reason not to do so. After we establish the basic structure that include the topic sentence and the supporting sentences, we may improve the cohesion and coherence of the paragraph by using transition words to link these sentences. The blue lines here represent the transition words used to provide linkage between the ideas expressed in these sentences. Basically, there are three general categories of the transition words. The first category indicates adding similar ideas or sequencing. The common transition words in this category include in addition, furthermore, moreover, also, besides, first, next, and many others. The second category indicates a turning point or a contrasting idea. 
The common transition words in this category include however, nevertheless, on the other hand, on the contrary, otherwise, although, in spite of, and many others. The third category indicates resulting or cause-effect relationship. The common transition words in this category include therefore, thus, consequently, because of that, for this reason, as a result, and many others. When we use these transition words, we should be careful not to overuse them, especially for the turning point transitions. It would be confusing if we have more than two turning points in one paragraph. For the transition of adding similar ideas, we can use more. But before we use them, we want to make sure we do have at least two different ideas that need to be linked, and they must have something similar. And when we try to link more than two similar ideas, we'd better keep some variations in the selection of transition words. We do not want to keep saying in addition repeatedly. The third method to improve cohesion and coherence is to use echo words, which are represented here as these green circles. The use of echo words include repetition of keywords, especially those in the topic sentence. We may also use synonyms, antonyms, hyponyms, and pronouns to relate to these keywords and thus improve the cohesion of the paragraph. These are the three basic methods we can use to develop a coherent paragraph. In addition to that, the consistency in verb tense and point of view are also important for coherence. If we shift from past tense to present tense within a paragraph, we may make our paragraph less coherent. A paragraph's coherence may also relate to its length. If we have a very long paragraph that occupies a whole page, we should check it carefully to see if it contains more than one main point and consider to break it up into easy to read short paragraphs. Finally, we should keep some variations in the length and structures of sentences. Too many look like simple sentences. We make our paragraph sounds choppy and stilted. Variations will make our paragraph sounds better and make the reading more enjoyable. How to achieve sentence variety is another topic for better writing. Today, we talked about how to develop a coherent paragraph. In fact, the basic principles are the same as to how to develop a coherent full article. To develop a coherent article, first, we need to establish a clear structure, including introduction, conclusion, and body paragraphs. In a paragraph, every sentence should serve the topic sentence. In an article, every paragraph should serve the thesis statement. To make a paragraph coherent, we use transition words between sentences. To make an article coherent, we can use transition sentences at the beginning and at the end of paragraphs. And finally, we should be consistent in the terminologies we use throughout the whole article. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Liu with Research Tips for the Endodox. Until next time, keep studying for a better life.